What do you get when you take a young Aussie vet and move him from the beaches of sunny Queensland to the Royal Borough of Richmond on London's historic River Thames? Hello. Hi, guys. The British people love animals. Hey, did you miss mummy? For me, they're kindred spirits. Caring for creatures great and small, there's never a dull moment for Dr. Scott Miller. That is far too forward, I'm afraid. And grateful owners certainly know who to turn to in their hour of need. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Scott cares, and I don't think you can fake that. And normally, as a vet, you know, you can have a... A sort of a line. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> tough northerner and supposed to be a tough Australian. And look what dogs do to him. This big-hearted boy from Oz is making his mark in one of the biggest cities in the world. He's going down the pole. Going down the pole with his mates. <laughs> I doff my cap to the doctor. Ah, that's a bit too much to tell here, mate. On this episode of Vet on the Hill, a shocking case of neglect could cause Honey to lose her sight. I don't know why people think they deserve to have a dog when they treat them in this manner. A much-loved cat stops breathing on the x-ray table. It's a bit of a shock. You're never really properly prepared for it. And that's just the beginning. Uh, did someone just switch the lights off? Can you switch it back on, please? Puppy classes create mayhem at Richmond. Completely barking mad. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong look inside. And relationship pressures as Scott's wife and sister-in-law are told to turn this dump into a state-of-the-art new practice. It might be wrong, but I am thinking of Scott as I'm doing this. Oh, we've broken through! It's an early start for Scott. He's on the road answering a call from rescue group All Dogs Matter. Their kennels are an hour's drive north from Richmond in Waltham Abbey, Essex. So there's thousands of dogs that are abandoned here in the UK every year, but not all of them find new homes. But I tell you what, it would be made a hell of a lot worse if it wasn't for the dedication of volunteers and staff at amazing rescue centres like All Dogs Matter. So when they say they've got a special case for me, I make it my absolute priority to get up and see them just as soon as I can to see if there's anything I can do to help. Hello, Mum. Hello, beautiful. Haven't you done well? But I, I can kind of see the problem. I'm almost certain she's probably had a caesarean having puppies this big in a tiny little dog like that. It's really small and the pups are really doing me. well. Yeah, they weren't going to come out the natural way, were they, honey? Jane is introducing Scott to the sad story behind Sadie and her three puppies. So Sadie was very heavily pregnant when she was brought into a vet clinic by her owners. She's only a baby herself. You've done so well, haven't you? Then she had a caesarean in order to deliver them. They were huge puppies. But of course, the bill was quite large and the owners simply refused to pay it, so they dumped her at the vet practice. All right, let's have a little look at this tummy, hey? If we just flip her onto her back like that, Jane, well done. Oh, lots of milk there for babies. Well done, Mum. We'd like to see if we can get her vaccinated as Absolutely, well. Absolutely, yeah, that's fine. I brought the vaccinations today. All good. Thankfully, the team here at All Dogs Matter jumped in and saved Sadie, took the puppies here, and then have reared them all together. They're a gorgeous little family, and all three puppies have already got homes. Yes, just no more puppies. You're far too small. OK, Sadie, be a brave girl. Brave girl, well done. Oh, I know. It's a little bit sore, isn't it, sweetheart? I know, brave girl. <laughs> Sadie's trying to be saved by one of the puppies over there. Look at that. <laughs> I'll save you, mummy. <laughs> Come here. Come here. Oh, my goodness. You guys are so cute. Let me have it. Oh, yes. Aren't you guys lucky? You've already got homes, hey? How cool is that? But Scott's work is a long way from finished. So, Scott, I know you're having fun with the pups, but I was just called. Another terrible shot. case of neglect is arriving at the kennels. Hi, ladies. How are you doing? Hi. Who have you got for me today? 
Right. Oh, hello, gorgeous. Hello. A little honey in the back. So this is honey. Hello, beautiful. And wow. You're not in very good condition. I only need a few seconds to see. There's quite a few issues here, yeah, isn't there? Yeah. Hey, but you're incredibly gorgeous. It's very sweet. Oh, so we got a call today from one of the local pounds that we work with about a beautiful Sharpe that had been abandoned. She was on death row, uh, on the death row list, so she'd done seven days and was now ready to go. So we were asked if we could come over and help out. First of all, I can see this poor skin. She's scratching like mad very red and very thickened, all these little scabs all over. So it's almost certain she's got mange, the mange yeah. mite, uh, which basically runs underneath the skin, uh, is incredibly itchy, leads to this hair loss, and of course then a secondary infection where they're scratching themselves all the time. Sure. But of course, one thing we know mostly about Sharpe's is all these extra folds of skin. Mm -hmm. And what she's got, which is very classic of the breed, is entropian or enrolling eyelids. And what they're doing is rubbing on the protective surface of the eye, the cornea, and leading to an ulcer. But certainly, the longer that's left, the more yes. chance that she'll become blind. blind. Oh, really? OK. Oh, poor honey, we can't have that. Scott mm. needs to fix you. I would imagine that a dog like Honey, she's quite a rare colour, would have probably cost, say, at least £1,000. So research, you know, look at what you're, you're, you're buying. You know, you wouldn't buy a Ferrari if you couldn't afford the insurance, you know. And it's so stressful for them being abandoned. They can suffer not just physically, emotionally. It's so difficult for them not knowing what's going on in their lives. I'm going to do my best to make your face as beautiful as your personality, but it's already pretty gorgeous. It is. Scott's here to save the day, save the honey monster. It is. I'll do my best. They're the victims in this. They are literally the pawn in a terrible game of dog chess. I don't know why people think they deserve to have a dog when they treat them in this manner. Scott will now take Honey back to Richmond for surgery that will decide her future. In order for her to get the forever home, she does have some fairly serious hurdles to jump. We've got to get the skin sorted. And absolutely, the eye problem that she's got is severe. The procedure that we have to perform is complex. And sometimes this surgery doesn't work. There we go. That's All right. Girl. So we'll goodbye to Ira. you next week. You'll be a good girl. Hmm? We'll see you next so week. So it really is an unsure future. But fingers crossed, she absolutely deserves a second chance. Bye, Scott. Bye, honey. See you next week. <laughs> While Honey has endured a tough start to her life, over at St Margaret's, there is definitely no shortage of love for nine week old Oscar. <laughs> See it building up. Scott's new clients, Stephen and Thomas, are besotted first-time parents. So Oscar, he's just completely cute and adorable and he's um, just completely added to our life. <laughs> he's absolutely amazing. He really is. Yeah, when he learns a new trick or when he comes up and first thing in the morning and his tail's all wagging, he's all excited to see you. It's just, there's no feeling like it in the world. Such a good boy, hey. The Labradoodle puppy has only been with them for four days and they're struggling with their controlled crying regime. The first night, he was just a complete state. We said we'd already decided we were going to do crate training. I'm sure any new, new dog or any new puppy owner will say the same thing about night one. The noise is just... I'm sure, you know, not having kids, but I'm sure it's a similar feeling to new yeah. parents with their babies when their babies are crying their hearts out. <laughs> Wow. It kind of does tug on your heartstrings when you think about this little mm. cute little defenceless puppy downstairs who's crying its heart out. Stephen and Thomas have decided they need help. And later today, they'll be heading to the Richmond Clinic for Oscar's first puppy class. Good boy. We're kind of hoping that we'll be able to pick up on other um, owners and also Sam, the lady who's going to run the class, hopefully ask her a bit about it and make sure that we're doing it right. Because we are concerned, this is our first puppy. Hey, sit. Hey. Hey, play nicely. Almost sit. Hi, ladies. Hello. Hi. Hey, hey. Oh, God. Honey. Hi, honey. Hi, 
It's a big reception at Richmond for Scott's new patient, Honey. We've got a little bit of work to do on her face, so Gemma, yeah. you can take it downstairs and get everything ready for us, and I'm going to get into my scrubs, all right? All right. Come, on, then. Come on, honey, buddy. The one-year-old Sharpay was dumped after her owners discovered she had medical problems that were going to cost over £1,000 to fix. Well done. What do you think of her? Oh, look at her skin. I know. It's really bad, isn't it? baby. Yeah, poor mangy girl. Hey, right. honey bun. So, we're just going to put oh. a catheter in your leg, OK? You're going to be a good girl. Give me some pre-med. I think she's just yearning for attention, any kind of attention, even a vet putting a needle in her arm. She's pretty, pretty chilled about it. She's just absolute sweetheart. This is a really complicated procedure that I'm about to perform on Honey. She's such a lovely dog, but at the moment, she doesn't have a home and she doesn't have a future. So I'd better get this procedure right. So you can see those horrible eyelashes. Look, we oh, go. Wow. Yeah, and there's a little bit of oh, swelling of all the tissues surrounding the eye as well. So, poor little girl. All right. Oh, you're going to see the world. Yeah. You have to see the world again. I don't know how people can treat them like this. Look at her. No. Do you know, with everything that she's got wrong with her and how uncomfortable her skin must feel, she's still so lovely. I know. I have to tell. I mean, they're so deep seated and so covered. I'm really struggling to be able to actually even see the eye. So, um, yeah. Honey's lived her whole life in discomfort, I would imagine. This hasn't been a good life for her so far. Did you get a bit carried away with the clipping? In your nice wide surgical site, Gemma. <laughs> it's not about aesthetics here. Well, it is about aesthetics, so I'm actually giving her a face lift. Yeah. OK. Time for your close-up. Scott is about to start the operation which could change the life of Honey the rescue dog. In this delicate doggy facelift, he needs to take away enough skin to stop her eyelashes scratching her cornea so exciting to meet the other puppies. I wonder how he's going to behave with them. Outside the Richmond practice, Stephen and Thomas have arrived with Oscar. I'm sure he'll be OK with the other ones as well. Yeah. They're confident their nine-week-old debutante will be a star at his first puppy class. I think he will be. He's a really fast learner. So far, he's really picked things up quickly. We haven't even tried sit or stay or anything like that. Good boy. Four other puppies will be attending. Jasmine. Jack, and sisters Pickle and Lily. We decided we wanted French Bulldogs because we'd heard they were great characters. And of course, after we'd decided to get two, we read all the literature that said, whatever you do, do not get two. But we just find it was a little bit too late. Pickle, Pickle. They're extremely hard work. They lead each other up the garden path. They're totally gorgeous, totally delightful. We love them to pieces. Thank you for coming. So my name's Sam. I run the puppy classes and the puppy parties. So if what I'd like to do first is if we go round and introduce yourselves and your puppy. This is Oscar. He's nine weeks old. He's a medium-sized Labradoodle. We brought him home on Saturday, so it's literally day four or day five for us. OK, so what's he brought to your life? So far, a lot of lack of sleep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Stephen and Thomas are keen to share their parenting problems with the group. With First Oscar. night was uh, a challenge, to be honest. We decided that we were going to put him downstairs from day one and be strong and put him in the cage, and that was going to be it. And within five, ten minutes, there was it was like torture. It was absolutely unbelievable. So we were in the hallway on our phones trying to Google, what, what do you do? <laughs> Books are out strewn across the living room floor in pyjamas, pulling our hair out. There is a point where you can't just leave them crying yeah. because they're just getting distressed. Yeah. Yeah. And then you can actually create issues with leaving them because yeah. they're, they're just getting worked up yeah. that no one's coming for them. So, yes, to a point, you should just let them yeah. cry out and yeah. see if they settle. And lots of time they do settle on their yeah. own. If you want to pop the pups down... It's time to let the puppies loose. <laughs> While Oscar's content to go to sleep, Pickle and Lily are immediately causing trouble. 
I'm very, very worried that they'll be out of control very quickly. And that if we don't stop it now, that we're going to have two dogs that are completely untrainable. So far, so good. Nearly there, honey. You're doing very well. Lovely. There we go. Here we go. Good girl. Hello, Hi. honey. Girl. Hi. Hello. Hi. Look, you can see me. Yes. Yeah. yeah, look, she's looking at me already. Hello. Honey. Honey. Oh, how cool is that? All right, should we put sleep you back again. in a cage to sleep it off? Yeah? But while Honey may be out of danger, the vet may be in a bit of trouble. It must have really hurt because I could just tell by his face he was in agony. He's about to cry, I think. Did that bring tears to your eyes? It wasn't funny to Scott at the time, but I was dying inside. I couldn't laugh, but... Uh, got, yeah. Both Scott and Honey will have to cope with a bit of swelling tomorrow. Good girl, you've done so well. That's the first big hurdle jumped. I'm just going to sort out your skin and find you a new home. <laughs> Upstairs, French Bulldog sisters Pickle and Lily are proving to be the class clowns. Pickle, come on. Completely barking mad. <laughs> Sam's now trying to teach their owner, Sally, the off command. Off. Good girl. If you say off and she's not leaving it straight away, then you know that she doesn't understand off yet. Off means you get through. <laughs> Good girl. Problem hopefully solved. But now Lily's decided she wants to be top dog. I'm not sure him. Yeah. <laughs> now he's the boss. And when Oscar finally does attempt to socialise, He's not impressed with how the other kids want to play. <laughs> We're both quite aware of it. It's not a human child, but he's our little boy. <laughs> he's he's our he little is our boy. little boy. He's <laughs> not a baby, he's our little boy. He is our little boy. Oh, Oscar. Put it in the scrapbook. <laughs> Put it in the scrapbook. <laughs> he's a proud man in any father's life. <laughs> when you puppy poos in the vet the first time. I love Oscar to pieces. I can't believe he's our dog. Oh, he's hooked up now. More, exactly, you'll pay more attention next week and learn lots of new things. Yes, we look forward Just to seeing you next week. Thank you so much again. See you That's next okay. week, Sam. Bye-bye. Bye. Good boy. Come on, gorgeous girl. Come on, beautiful. That's a good girl. It's 24 yes. hours since Honey's operation, so and the Sharpay's eyes have already opened up significantly. Any woman that gets a facelift is always going to be critical of the result, but the fact that Honey is following me around and uh, giving me kisses and cuddles, I think that client satisfaction is all good. Her uh, spatial awareness with the collars a little bit questionable. She's smashing into almost everything. But you know what, it has to stop her from scratching those sutures and it's all important to get the result we want. Honey has also been ravaged by mange mites, which are still causing excruciating inflammation to her skin. Not much of a spa treatment today for poor Honey. Instead of having a shampoo that smells like lavender or a rose petal, it smells like petrol. Pretty disgusting, but the hope is once we've killed off those nasty mites, she is going to have a beautiful, glossy, honey-coloured coat. Great teamwork, but there does seem to be a bit of truth serum in this bathwater. Vets never get involved in anything like this. It's very rare that they get involved in the dirty work, so it's always funny when they do, because they always do it wrong. <laughs> Nathan is only one of two male vet nurses employed at the practices. We're yep. surrounded by a bunch of very, very strong wills, women. You know, there's bloke solidarity with yeah. me and Nate. Especially when it comes to that time of the month. That's the... Uh... <laughs> He's going to get it now, I tell you. <laughs> I think the guys secretly like being outnumbered, and they give as good as they get. And certain ones, certain boys, are more bigger gossip than the girls. I won't name names. Nathan. 
All right, honey, so you've got to dry off naturally. Oof. I tell you what, anyone that gets this dog is going to be lucky because she is an absolute delight. So this is the street. Nearby in Isleworth, Scott's wife Zoe and her sister Maz are on a mission. And is that it? That's the, this new block here? It's not that one. It's uh, this one. <laughs> this one. <clears throat> yeah. This is the new practice. We, we're just going to... Maz runs Scott's two vet practices. This old tobacconist shop is about to become number three. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> it isn't. It's, um... This is far from... It's a, a fixer-upper. It's a fixer-upper. It's a wreck at the moment, and it's my job to try and turn that into a practice as beautiful as our other two. It does need a bit of work. A little bit of work, Mouse. We cannot <laughs> polish this. We cannot polish this. Planning on rolling it in a lot of glitter. Oh, my God. I'm going to take <laughs> shares in glitter. Zoe will be doing all the design work. This is her first look at the site. This is unbelievable. Tell me we haven't paid for this yet. Wanna look inside? I'm gonna kill him. <laughs> the Isleworth practice is most definitely the biggest project that I have given my sister-in-law, Maz. And this one, it could make or break us. Okay. Welcome to paradise. Oh my goodness, wow. Basically, all of this is going. It's a mess, it is a total mess. There's bits of wood hanging off. There is no windows, <laughs> there's no windows. What has no windows? I know, Scott's new clinic. <laughs> We're not gonna keep this bad boy. No, no, this is going on. I like it, I like this. It's quality for Micah. I was gonna say something like a bit of chip for Micah to say we can value <laughs> your say, pet. We can look after your animal. Thank you. Hi. I swear he's getting heavier. Heavier by the day. Go on three. Thank you, thank you. Lisa's bringing three-year-old Edwin to see Scott, but his weight is not the issue. Hello, handsome boy. So what's Edwin in to see me for today? Um, well, over the last couple of months, I've noticed that uh, he's been having terrible problems with... Getting out of his box? <laughs> 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 come on, mate. Wanting to come and see you. Yeah, it's not you. that bad, is it? <laughs> Holding up a delight. Uh, with, um, with runny eyes, runny nose, sneezing. Right. Uh, and at times having episodes of coughing uh, where he just sounds and feels very full of fluid. Right. OK. Well, that all sounds fairly significant, actually. Mm. Um, it does sound a little bit like feline asthma. Yeah. So sometimes he sounds a bit like Darth Vader. I feel really sorry for him, and there are times when he's just, you know, seems to be struggling, seems more lethargic. Um, he's still eating, but he's playing less. And then more recently, as I said, the coughing is quite worrying to me. Uh, it's thought that maybe one in a hundred cats in the UK can suffer with asthma, feline asthma. And when we're trying to manage asthma, obviously asthma can be potentially life-threatening. So what we need to do is get ahead of it. Uh, diagnose it early and, uh, and then have them on certain levels of treatment. Asthma in cats does present in a fairly similar way to people. People are short of breath, their respiration rate's high, uh, they're just struggling to breathe, struggling to survive, and exactly the same thing can happen in cats. If we do find that it is asthma, then it can be caused by so many different things. So we do need to sort of mine down into those, find out exactly what causes might be present, uh, and then how best to manage it. But first, of course, we need to sure. effectively diagnose. Sure, okay, that sounds like a good plan, thank you. And just remind me, because um, I don't want to embarrass myself, I know that you're a doctor. What, what kind of doctor are you exactly? I'm an ear, nose and throat surgeon. Yes, <laughs> yeah, of course you are. Yeah, yeah. that's... Uh, Yes. That's not intimidating at no. all, is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> right. I really have to look after no, you now, Edwin, you don't do. I? You do. You <laughs> do. 
I feel a little bit sorry for Scott. It's not going to be easy because um, obviously I'm, I'm coming from a specialist background, but uh, I know he'll do the right thing. And uh, you know, Scott's an excellent vet, so I'm very happy to leave Edwin in his capable hands. And one thing I must say uh, is that I have always had a soft spot for animals with human names. Um, I've got the dogs Betty and Dave, and actually the first cat that I ever treated in the UK was called Colin, which I loved. <laughs> yes. So Edwin is right up my street. <laughs> Joss is perfect. Well, he certainly is. I've never known a cat to be quite so soft as, as Edwin is. Um, he never scratches. He wants to be with you the whole time. He talks to you and loves to lie on our pillows at night when we're sleeping. Bye-bye, Edwin. You'll be a good boy today, and I'll see you later. And you to Scott. There we go. There we go. Right. Come on, handsome boy. No pressure. Uh, be good, both of you. Right, we'll try. <laughs> we'll try. Say bye, Mummy. Bye, Edwin. <laughs>Great thing is, I mean, there's barely anything to be done in here. Really, <laughs> it's it's just, very low maintenance. The wallpaper's done. You know, it's it'll glue that bad boy ready back. To go to in Isleworth, Scott's oh, wife Zoe is I'm still in shock about her husband's choice of site for the new clinic. And there's something about the plaster coming away from the wall that says, I'm reassured. It gives it that lived in feeling <laughs> that we were going was, for. Like something you lived know. here. And yeah. then died here. Yeah. Yeah. And he's probably still dead here. <laughs> <laughs> Zoe's sister Maz has been managing Scott's practices for more than four years. This is the most pressure Scott and I have been under in our, our partnership at, at work, without a doubt. As long as we don't fall out over it, then everything's going to be great. <laughs> oh, wow. So this, this will be the consult room. When Scott and I first started working together, we were both very aware that family and, and business don't always get along. It's a tough one. It's a nerve-wracking thing, because obviously the family's the most important bit. If Scott was in the room, I'd tell you he was in charge. <laughs> this is possibly the ugliest room I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I'm in a special position in that I'm ruled with an iron fist by two lionesses in my life. It's the bars putting me off. I can't Funny work out Anna. if it's keeping things out or keeping you in. <laughs> I don't envy Scott for being married to one of us and then working with the other one. I really don't. I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. <laughs> right, you have to be care really careful coming down. <laughs> you may never come back. Because you might never come back. This renovator's delight needs to be transformed in just three months. This is actually horrifying. He did not mention it was like this. I think you should have said repair. Mm. 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 Build. Start from scratch. Yeah. On the upside, we'll get to spend a lot of time here. Ah. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Don't. It's going to be great once it's done but there is so much to do so much to do and part of me could strangle scott for that you're actually scared being here yeah but not because i think there's something else here because i've got to turn this into a veteran practice <laughs> uh, i'm gonna sneeze in a minute mm. oh god edmund i got a little uh confession to make is that um, I'm slightly allergic to long-haired cats, so I'm getting relatively similar oh, clinical signs to you <laughs> right now. Three-year-old Edwin is coughing and struggling for breath, but Scott's concerned the cat's runny nose could be something serious. So today it's about trying to diagnose the condition and see how far down the line towards asthma Edwin really is. So first of all, we're going to do some blood work. We're going to be doing some x-rays as well, having a look at the chest and seeing if there's any changes. All right, buddy. Oxygen on. X-ray. So the news is that it does look like the early stages of asthma. All the tubes leading down to the airways are just a little bit thickened. It shows they're a little bit inflamed. But I do think, looking at this x-ray, 
there's definitely lots we can do to help manage this condition. But suddenly, what was a routine investigation has turned into an emergency. He's just not breathing the best at the minute. Edwin has crashed on the table. OK, so you just have to start giving me some positive air pressure. Yep. Yeah, we have to uh, inflate the chest to just get a better clarity to that lung picture. Uh, but by doing that, he just stopped breathing for That's a little amazing. bit. When you have an animal that tries to die on you, you go into autopilot. Have we got the drops that go under the tongue somewhere? Oh, yeah. And all that training that we've done just kicks in and straight away we start giving him some injections to try and stimulate his breathing. And at the same time, giving him positive air pressure, just putting some air back into those lungs, getting him going again. That was him? Yeah, it was him. Is that, it wasn't you, no, was it? That wasn't me. There we go, good boy. Oh dear, okay. So that's a nice breath there. So um, yeah, he just decided to... Did someone just switch the lights off? Can you switch it back on, please? But just as the tension starts what? to subside... You're kidding. There's another unexpected setback. I think the power's gone. The power's gone. Automatically. There are swear words going through my head, but you've just got to get on with the job. You have to try and not panic. It's tough. Just keep your wits about you and focus on the cat. Keep the ISO off. Did someone just switch the lights off? Can you switch it back on, please? Just keep your wits about you and focus on the cat. Keep the ISO off. At the Richmond practice, Edwin the cat has just been revived after crashing on the X-ray table. But now a power blackout has plunged the treatment room into darkness. Scott is trying to keep everyone calm. Finally, we get Edwin breathing again. And then, just out of the blue, the power goes. And we have absolutely no light. The only light I've got to look at Edwin with, the emergency lighting. Insane. Uh, we'll check the power box. And everything is up. Whole street's off. The whole street's off. You're kidding. OK. The one bit of monitoring equipment we've got is on battery. Thank goodness. OK. Well, we're not going to be able to do anything more until we have light. No. Yep. For second year vet nurse Jess, this is a confronting lesson. It's just a panic, really. For my first time experiencing something like that, it's a bit of a shock. They train you how to deal with these situations, but you're never really properly prepared for it. Oh. Hey. Hey, oh, hey, let there be light. <laughs> and a breathing patient. More importantly, so. Yes, good boy. Right, so now we can see you again. Let's do the next step. To try to find out more about the state of Edwin's lungs, Scott now wants to carry out another procedure. Just as we go to perform the bronchoalveolar lavage, which is putting a tube and then fluid down into his lungs, Edwin decides to stop breathing again. There's too much at stake here. He's far too compromised, and there's absolutely no way when a cat isn't breathing, am I going to put fluid down his lungs? We're going to wake this cat up because uh, he's just not stable. It, we're just That's not in a position to go any further at the moment and doing another procedure which could further compromise his breathing is just not a good idea. Not a good idea for him, certainly not a good idea for us. All right, it's OK, it's all right, I know. There was a fright there, didn't you? We know how much Lisa loves this cat. He's certainly not going to die on my watch, I'll tell you that. But yeah, it's um, hairs on the back of the neck and stuff. Right, so a very complicated case just got more complicated, OK? Yeah. So you guys need to watch this cat like a hawk, OK? No one leaves the side of Edwin this afternoon. If you need a toilet break, tag in your mate. I was very proud of Emma and Jess. Jess, it's the first time she's seen anything like that. And rather than cry or shake or be in the corner, she was actively participating in resuscitating Edwin and bringing him back to life. She's a good one, that one. Watch this space. This is what we all trained for. Mm -hmm. And you both did excellent, really, really well. So 
good job, good hustle. Any situation like this, the few hours afterwards are always the crucial ones. Um, he's still not fully recovered. Yeah, this is uh, us set in for the afternoon now. When you've got a critical patient, you don't leave it side. Later that day, Nina from rescue group All Dogs Matter arrives to start Honey on her new journey. Hi there, hi, I'm Scott, how are you? Hi, I'm Nina, nice hi, to Nina. meet you. Hi, Nina, and You're more right? importantly, very good. This is Honey. Hello, hello little sweetheart. Isn't oh she gosh, gorgeous? She's gorgeous? Very rewarding for the dog, for you as a human. When we see them progressing and finally landing on their paws, it's just wonderful. Gorgeous. Look at her. She's so cute. Look at those beautiful eyes. It's much better now. They're more comfortable. It was lovely to see the bond that Nina struck up straight away with Honey. And I tell you, the more and more she spoke to Honey, the more and more I wanted to speak. What a great accent. Mm. Oh, no. oh dear, and tongues. Well, that's very French. <laughs> <laughs> I can't use her on the French side. Yeah. It's always sad to see them go, but I tell you what, she is an absolute stellar dog and she's going to find a great owner, I have no doubt. Hopefully, you'll let me come and do a house visit soon because I'd just love to see how she gets on. Of course. All right then, bye-bye, beautiful. Hey, good luck at your new home. I don't think it's going to be long before you've got a loving family to go to. Ooh, you're beautiful. All right, all the best. Thank you very see much for everything. Thanks so much for coming. See you later. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, honey. Bye. See ya. Bye. Hi, buddy. How are we doing? A little bit better than this morning. Are you ready to go home? I need to take you out of your litter tray, though, because you're not helping me being stuck in there. As for Edwin, it's been five hours since his near-death experience. Hello, Hello, buddy. Here he is. Here's a handsome guy. Look yeah. who's that. It's his mummy. Scott's not looking forward to breaking that news to Edwin's owner, Lisa, who just happens to be an ear, nose and throat surgeon. So, yeah, eventful day. Um, he gave me a bit of a shock okay. today because we were went through the process, took the bloods. Blood's beautiful. We then went to x-ray. And just after that, he stopped breathing. Uh, and then he decided to not breathe for a, quite a considerable amount of time. So he had to do external air resuscitation, just basically filling his lung. Oh, well, <laughs> with, my, with my animals, I have to say it's nothing surprises me. But, uh, you know, obviously Scott and his team are, you know, consummate professionals. Lisa's taken it well, but Scott's decided not to give too much information. Although I'm always completely honest with clients, Sometimes there's maybe a little bit too much honesty and I wonder if we say that we were watching the cat recover in darkness because all the power had gone out. Might have been a step too far, so I think I might tell her that tomorrow. I think you and I thought maybe it was at the milder end of asthma. Yeah. The way he's responded to just basic breathing under anaesthetic makes me think that it's much more severe than we mm. first anticipated. Mm. Mm. So I'm gonna be recommending to Lisa that we start with a puffer spray, an inhaler. Just something to be able to provide Edwin with a medication which will cool down the allergic reaction, cool down the inflammation, and get him breathing a little bit easier. Go. Yeah, what do you think of that? Too bad? Indifferent. Yes. Yeah, it's, oh, okay. <laughs> it's not overly impressed. We will see an improvement. Sure which will mean that we shouldn't get caught up by an asthma attack in the future. So although it was scare for me today, yeah. I think the long term is actually pretty bright for him. Can you hear that, Edwin? Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. I think he's in good hands. Oh. We've got a diagnosis, we've got a plan, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll carry on from there. Okay. All right, well, mate, mm. your mm. time is done, and I'm really glad that I've been able to send you home in one piece after the oh. scare. Well, thank you so much. Today? <clears throat> I'm sorry he caused you so much trauma. Oh, no worries, I'm mate. I'm sorry. <laughs> I really hope that he's going to get in this box yeah. a little bit easier than he got out. In you go. Good, Good boy. boy. Good boy. Right, let's get you home and get you some supper. Take care. OK, bye -bye. all right, take care. Bye-bye.
One week later, and the major renovation of the Isleworth building is underway. Reluctant project manager Maz is already feeling the deadline pressure. If anyone sees Scott, tell them I want to work with him. The clinic has to open in three months. It's just a bit frightening, as I was hoping things would start to look neater, as opposed to, um, like that. <laughs> hey, can I put a hole in the wall? <laughs> Maz has decided what she needs is some stress relief therapy. Originally, I was thinking, oh, you need to have a bit of anger behind you, don't you, to kind of put this really big hammer through a wall. It might be wrong, but I am thinking of Scott as I'm doing this. And then I remembered that I was standing in this building that Scott had put me in with this wall that needed to come down. And the hammer kind of swung by itself, really. This one's for you, Scott. <laughs> Nothing less. Amazing. As much as we're in full swing of it all, the finish line, sadly, is, well, it's quite far away, and yet somehow it doesn't seem far enough away at the same time. Oh, we've broken through! It's probably a bit lucky he's not here, actually. He would run if he saw me holding this. He would actually run. Yes! Yeah. And my work is done. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Look at my girls. She's got both. Another two weeks later, and Honey is looking very relaxed in her forever home. Good girl. The Sharpay's new family are Gwen, Philip, and their daughter Catherine. Honey also has two new doggy siblings. We saw her on the website, decided we really liked her, but she was actually at a foster home, so we were told we can go and see her. So we took Riley, the pug, with us to see how they got on. And me and my mum fell in love with her. So she came for a week and she just didn't leave. <laughs> she just stayed. So, it, yeah, it worked out really well for her. Now we've got large, medium large, and medium small. medium and small. Which yes. I like that. I just hope she knows that she's staying here now. I'm not sure she knows that yet. Hello! <laughs> Hello, gorgeous girl. How are you? As oh, promised, so Scott's arrived to check up on one of his favourite patients. I'm elated to see just how comfortable Honey seems to be and uh, Catherine already seems to adore her. Well, let's have a little exam of her, shall we? Hello. Who are you? Hello. Who's this guy? This is Nelson. Hello, Nelson. And you've got a pug the over there as and well. this is Riley over here. <laughs> so we've, Riley. Got, we've got quite a collection here. Yeah. Let's have a little look at your eyes first. They do look fantastic. The scars have healed really well. They both seem the same size and shape, and you can start seeing those beautiful brown mm, eyes that she's, she's got, got as well. She's got lovely eyes. They really do. And how's her skin been going? Even the two weeks she's been here, I think she looks a lot better. Yeah, well, she's certainly not itchy anymore, scratching herself to death, and it definitely looks... A lot less red, a lot mm. less sore, there's no scabs. From a behavioural point, she does seem very stressed here. She looks stressed, doesn't she? <laughs> you are so chilled <laughs> and happy in your new home, aren't you? I love Honey. I couldn't imagine our house without her now. She's just, she's my new baby. She comes to bed with me for half an hour every night and has a cuddle. Then she goes back downstairs and then she comes and wakes me up for work in the morning, <laughs> which is better than an alarm. It's a nice wake up call, yeah. As a vet, to treat a dog and see them getting better, that's one thing. But then to find a family in a home as great as this, for this great little dog, I'm absolutely over the moon, so. Yeah. You deserve it, don't you, honey? Mm, you're a lucky girl, and so are you. You're a lucky girl. <laughs> I am as well. <laughs>